Okay, so we are going to be going through level two, module six, rigging. I'm gonna go through the book and do some explaining of the material in there and show you some examples. Hopefully it works over video. So the introduction, starting on page two. Millwright, you'll frequently be, re be required to move very heavy objects into position. Sure, as part of a millwright's job, you're going to be moving stuff around. They give you different examples like compressors, generators, motors, valves, other things. But you're going to use rigging equipment to move all kinds of stuff everywhere. Um, you'll be using cranes, you'll be using jacks, you'll be using come-alongs, uh, chain hoists, all kinds of different things. So you should know how they all work and the hardware that goes with all of these. Because the main thing with rigging is safety and we want to be doing these projects safely. The rigging is the one thing where if you make a mistake, people get hurt and killed. So you really have to be careful. You know, if you're using a claw hammer and driving a nail in, if you make a mistake, you hit your hand. But if you make a mistake rigging, you can kill a whole bunch of people and yourself. So this is one of those topics that we have to really include safety on in great detail. Um, the second paragraph there, moving heavy off in bulky objects for that reason. Safety is the most important consideration. Safety also includes being able to calculate what we can lift, what it weighs. Um, also signaling the crane operator. On pages 26 through 35 of this module, there will be different hand signals. And starting on Monday, we will be doing a test or a quiz in the classroom where you I look at these different symbols and identify them. So you will take that quiz every day till you pass it with 100%. So I would study those pages 26 through 35 really good and make sure that, I, that you know all this information well and you can pass that test. Um, there again, you have to know the right equipment and the capacity for everything. That's why we figure the weight, that's why we look at the capacity of the slings, all of the different hardware, all of that good stuff. And then even, even then, cranes and other devices have lifting capacity limits. For example, in our overhead chain hoist or overhead crane in the shop, anywhere there we can lift five ton. But when we get out into a mobile application, we extend the boom out or we raise or lower the boom. It changes how much we can lift. And we'll get into that a lot more later, but you gotta be able to figure out what your capacity is when you have the, the boom extended to this point or the boom angle lowered down to this point. And we'll go through lifting charts. That'll be part of the performance eval also and read and interpret a lifting chart. So we'll do that later on in this module. Um, Again, this is a designed to give you basic instruction. Section two gets into rigging hardware. They're gonna talk about equalizer beams, spreader beams, eye bolts, hooks, shackles, uh, turnbuckles, all these different things. So we're gonna start with hooks. They talked about it in the core rigging some. Here's an example of a rigging hook, a straight eye hook. Um, this is going to attach to a shackle could attach to a sling, could attach to whatever. The other end is going to be attached to whatever lifting device that we're talking about. So a come along, a chain hoist, this could be hooked to a block and tackle to a crane. So what we need to talk about here that we didn't talk about so much in, in the core curriculum stuff was where do we load the hook? First, we'll start with the inspection. On any inspection, we start with the working load limit, rated capacity. On this one, that's going to be WLL one ton. I know you can't see that in the video. I had to put my glasses on to read it, but that's where we start. We gotta know that. If I use this hook that comes with the ratchet lever chain hoist that you guys have all seen before, we're going to look on there and we're gonna find the three quarter ton here. So this one's a better one to inspect. This one's brand new. There shouldn't be any damage. Things we're gonna inspect. Does the safety latch come back here? If it doesn't, that means that this has been pulled out or this has been stretched. If it doesn't fit in there correctly, which is a dead giveaway that there's something wrong with the hook, it's been damaged. The saddle part that they're talking about in figure two and where to hook the load in figure three, down here is the saddle. We're looking for any cracks, any gouges, any damage, anything there. Um, 
obviously corrosion and wear. We've wore the paint off, but the paint isn't lifting anything, so that's not a big deal. These are all going to have the paint wore off of them and things like that. It's part of how it goes. But we're looking for any cracks and things like that. In these applications, do these spin? Will they move 360 degrees? We'll go back up here. When they do their monthly and year, or yearly inspections of cranes and stuff, they imagine this throat opening. And it says in here that OSHA regulations require the hook be replaced if the throat has opened 15% from its original size. So what we do is take that measurement there, and I did it on this one. I measured this distance. It was one inch before from this point here to this point here. So we would take 15% of that and 15% of one inch or 1,000, 100 would be 150 or 0.15, 150 thousandths. So of that, an eighth of an inch would be 125. So we're looking at a little bit over an eighth of an inch of that being stretched and that would be no good to use anymore. The other part that they talk about is 10% twist. Well, I would say if you look down at this at all, and if there's any per, any twisting in that hook at all, where this end is tipped out or bent out, that is going to be damage that we're going to get rid of. We're gonna get rid of this hook and replace it. I don't know if you, yeah, I guess you could take a protractor and find out where 10 degree angle is and all of that. But at this point, if you see any twisting in it or whatever, that means it's been pulled at an angle and it's not going to be as strong as it used to be. So make sure that you look at these hooks also for damage like that. Because that 10% or 10 degrees from its original place, that's the maximum allowed. But if you see any damage, I would get rid of it. But again, they have a standard there. 10 degrees twist, 15% open. That doesn't mean you can't get rid of it before then. But that if it's anything past that, it doesn't pass OSHA standards. So again, there in figures two and three, it shows you where to load the hook. If we load the hook, if we, the sling doesn't fit over this very well, and we just get it down here, and I'll use the shackle to show it, we're gonna do what they call point loading, which is going to pull out here, and it's going to damage and open that. We want that down here. We want that directly below the lifting line. So we can do that. Again, we would not be able to use different things. I grabbed a big shackle. We couldn't use this with this hook. It's too big. Same thing with the slings that are too big. We have to make sure that we have the proper size eyes or whatever on the slings to make sure that they fit in there. And then that's pretty much the section on hooks. Make sure you pay attention to it because hooks are used everywhere and you need to be able to understand it. Section 2.2 gets into shackles. Well, as you've seen, I had this one here, I have this one here. We have some different types, and they showed a bunch of pictures like these in the core. This one has a cotter pin and a threaded nut on the end. This one just has a quick release pin, and the pin comes out. So, um, obviously, the ones you guys are going to see for the majority of the time are the screw pins and things like that. What they talked about in, the, in this part and what they talked about in the core, it's sized off of this thickness, not off of the pin thickness. We need to make sure the pin screws all the way in and screws in easily. If the threads are damaged, it doesn't tell us if this is spread apart or if the threads are damaged. So we just take it that it's been damaged and this is pulled apart. So we have to be careful. Make sure that that screws in and out all of the way. Um, shackles are used for all kinds of things. To attach a sling to an eye bolt, to hook, it, hook up things, just to do whatever. Again, when we hook this on the hook, we want the pin here. We want that on there because it's not gonna roll, just like we talked the other day. The correct method is this way, not having it like this, and then having that roll over there. On page four, it shows some pictures of in figure five of the hook hooked up and how it can roll the pin and do things like that. So pay attention to those pictures as you read through the module. There's a couple warnings on the shackle there also. Well, first off in the inspection, does the pin go all the way in and out easily? Is there any cracks? Is there any damage? Is there any 
any marring, anything like that in here that could affect the integrity. And then we always start with the working load limit. On this one, it uses the, the letters SWL, safe working load. On this one, it uses WLL, working load limit. On this one, it uses working load limit. So they're all a little bit different. Make sure you find that rated capacity or working load limit. And then shackles that are stretched or that have crowns or pins wore more than 10% should be reported and removed from service. If a shackle is pulled at an angle, the capacity is reduced. So when we pull at an angle, and this one, this Crosby shackle that's never been used, has some marks here at 45 degree angles that we would be pulling at. When we do that, we reduce the capacity of the shackle. So, but it's still rated at the 45 degree for the two and a half ton. So, um, obviously when we use these together, this hook was rated for one ton. We could use this shackle that's rated for two and a half ton with it, but we have to go back to the working load limit of the hook. We couldn't lift over one ton. Um, lastly, in figure five there on the next page, it shows the picture of when using a shackle on the hook, the pin of the shackle should be hung on the hook, and it talks about spacers like the picture in Figure five to hold that hook in the middle of the shackle. So make sure you, you orient it correctly and pay attention. That's this. For this section, we'll make some more videos as we keep going through and pick up on next on eyebolts.